So folks, as we've been discussing, many others have as well, Old Donnie did not get quite the victory he expected last night. And in many ways, when you look at how low energy he was, and when you look at how the media reacted, it's clear that there are far more dark clouds than silver linings. But what was really interesting was last night, the media cut him off, interrupted him, and basically called him the racist a-hole that he is in the middle of this night of victory that actually, when you look at the data, has a lot of troubling signs for Trump. So I want you to watch all of this because we need to cut down this narrative that he is inevitable. And we also need to understand how this is a major opportunity for Joe Biden and the Democrats. But again, watch all of this because as I've been saying, if you hit the like and subscribe button and watch the entire runtime of the video, not clicking on halfway through or anything, YouTube will recommend this virally. It'll go mega viral and conservatives will see it too. They are, they're they not going to see what I'm going to show you because they don't watch this on TV, but they will get it recommended to them on their YouTube feeds. And with your help, they'll see the truth about their fallen cult leader. But but say, at the, let me just interject. Sorry. I'm sorry, I just have to do a little bit no. of business just for a second. Um, at this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. Uh, we will let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy, something substantive and important. Um, the reason I'm saying this is... Of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. It is not out of spite. It is not a decision that we relish. It is a decision that we regularly revisit. Um, and honestly, earnestly, it is not an easy decision. But there is a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. That is a fundamental truth of our business and who we are. And so his remarks tonight will not air here live. We will monitor them um, and let you know about any news that he makes. Steph, I interrupt you. I was just saying, I believe that's why J.B. Pritzker is not afraid or not answering Joy's Gaza question. I want, though, I want, though, to look at this another way. Let hmm. me just ask you, if Barack Obama took four years off, and then ran in a Democratic caucus in Iowa, would 50% of Democrats vote against Barack Obama? No, no, they wouldn't. Let me answer your question I, for I you. Mean, no, they wouldn't. It's a, the, fact it, that, the fact that Donald Trump has, we have a delay. The fact yeah. that Donald Trump has 50% of Republicans not voting for him, and as Steve Kornacki yeah. said, one third hating him, in the state of Iowa, in the state of Iowa. You know, right. we can all sit here and, and you know, put on sackcloth and ashes and, and, and moan about Donald Trump getting 51% of the vote. Gotta say, for people who actually wanna win general elections, that's not good news. Right, right. And I, I, there, there wasn't really a delay, Joe. I was trying to make, make a calculation in my head. You know, in a way, Trump didn't really even take any time off. I mean, here's the, the analogy that's the right analogy. You know, Trump, Trump transformed, you know, Iowa was a state that, to bring up Barack Obama, uh, Barack Obama wins this state in the general election in 2008. He wins this state in the general election in 2012. Trump comes in here, wins the, wins, comes in third in the Iowa caucus in 2016, but wins the state, turns it red in 2016, turns it red easily in 2020. So he's actually run here as a presidential candidate in the last two presidential cycles. He hasn't taken any time off, right? He's effectively the incumbent running uh, in the Republican Party. So if you thought about that, imagine Barack Obama has won, won, wins Iowa in 2008 and wins it in 2012, and now Barack Obama's running in the Iowa caucuses in 2016. What would Barack Obama's margin have been in Iowa in the 2016 Democratic caucuses? Would have been, I would reckon, 90 95%? I mean, yes. 85%? I mean, he would, he would one of the most popular Democratic presidents in history. He, he, Trump at getting over 50 was an achievement for him in terms of proving that he has the majority of the Republican Party, at least here in Iowa. But it is a sign of something uh, that there is this, there continues to be this large, people know Donald Trump really well. He has transformed the party, uh, but Republicans know him really well. And there is still, there may not be enough of a hunger 
to depose Donald Trump as the Republican nominee. But there is a large right. hunger in the party for people who want to depose Donald Trump. And those people who voted last night for Nikki Haley, uh, some of them who voted for Ron DeSantis, those people are not the normally you would say they'll fall in line behind their Republican uh, nominee in the general election. A fair number of those people are Democrats and independents who were out there for Nikki Haley last night. They're likely to be voting for Joe Biden when it comes uh, to, 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 to 20, in 2024. Enough to make Iowa right. blue? Probably not. But as a national no. indicator, it's an important thing that points to Trump's weakness as a general election candidate. Yeah, and, and I understand what people are saying. Oh, they say, well, look at the polls right now. Yeah, okay, look at the polls right now. I'll look at the polls and, uh, you know, next <laughs> year around the uh, mm -hmm. around election time. And again, this doesn't, 50% 50, 50 of people voting in the Iowa caucuses against a former president uh, is bad news for that party's prospects in the general election. Not good news. And again, just, again, let's sit, ask what, Barack Obama would have gotten if he'd done the same thing. It would have been in the high 90s. Uh and interesting, we understand, at least Kristen said, they got rid of the teleprompter <laughs> right before he was starting to speak. And then, as Jake emphasized, very uncharacteristic. You don't want to read too much into it, but clearly he got the message uh, that this is when he was saying, uh, Caitlin, uh, you know, come together, praising his rivals, that that was what he wanted people to hear in this moment. Yeah, it shows how confident he feels coming off of this win. I mean, I haven't heard Donald Trump give a speech like that probably in eight years. And I've been to a lot of Donald Trump's speeches. I mean, he hasn't called Ron DeSantis Ron since Ron DeSantis entered the right, presidential race. He has only he called him. Him, him by nicknames and called him disloyal. And to see him give that speech, I think, speaks to how he feels after this victory tonight. But I also think this is a speech that he's giving after he has not had any wins in several years. I mean, he lost the 2020 election. He's facing 91 criminal counts. He's going to be in a New York courtroom tomorrow for a trial where a, ju a jury will determine how much he owes the columnist E. Jean Carroll for defaming her, something that they've already decided. They're not deciding that. They're deciding how much he owes her. And I think that is what is fueling that attitude that you saw there, where he was speaking graciously of his opponents, clearly calling on them to drop out of the race and talking about this notion of uniting the country, which struck me, given obviously how polarized the country is at this moment and this idea of uniting liberals and conservatives in that speech. But I think it's also because he has not had a win like that in so long. I mean, he's only dealing with criminal charges and civil suits and trials. But he's trying to keep an, uh, a sense of inevitability about this. I mean, this is the kind of speech you would expect to hear from a candidate after Super Tuesday, if they've won, you know, five or six states and they're rolling to the nomination. This is the very first <laughs> contest, right, right. the first one. And he was sending all kinds of signals to Capitol Hill, to his rivals. He just two days ago was attacking Vivek Ramaswamy. Tonight, he was praising him. He was using Ron DeSantis's actual name. I mean, he, he's sending a signal to his party, this thing is over, and he wants them to get on board. We'll see what happens, but that, mis that was the signal that was unmistakable to me as he heads into this next week going into New Hampshire. And I was struck. Uh, what are your takeaways from the result last night? Well, first of all, 50-50 for an incumbent really sucks. Um, <laughs> this is not good for Donald Trump. I don't care how they spin it. I get it that he won more delegates than the other candidates, but he got 50 percent of the vote in his own party after being an incumbent president. As you guys have said, that's not good. And then think about the money that was spent and how much of it was spent on negative ads. Seventy million dollars was spent by DeSantis and Haley, only 11 million by Trump of that <clears throat> of that money. Most of it was negative ads against DeSantis and Haley. No negative ads against Trump. I mean, there was no negative ads against Trump. And he still only managed 50% of the vote. Can you imagine having an election where your opponents refuse to run a negative ad on you? It's crazy. So this, I don't, yep. I, you know, you, all we need, all the Democrats need is for an aggressive campaign to make sure that our base stays together, that everyone understands what's at stake, that women of America understand what this man did to our freedom in this country, and to grab that 25 to 30 percent of the Republican Party that said last night very clearly, nah, I don't really want to go there. I don't believe that all this evidence 
in courts of law has been made up. I don't believe that he won the election. I think he's not a good idea for our country. So I don't think it was that great a night for Donald Trump. We're going to seal up the border. Because right now we have an invasion. We have an invasion of millions and millions of people that are coming into our country. I can't imagine why they think that's a good thing. Donald Trump declaring victory with a historically strong showing in the Iowa caucuses. If these numbers hold the biggest victory for a non-incumbent president in the modern era for this contest, a relatively subdued speech as these things go so far, although here he is right now under under my voice. You hear him repeating his anti-immigrant rhetoric. Uh, he did take time to praise his rivals, Haley and DeSantis and Ramaswamy by name, rather untrump like to do that, a gracious, but perhaps a sign of some message discipline, at least for one night. He also praised his wife, all five of his children, all five by name. The victory for Mr. Trump was a decisive one. The number's still coming in, but Trump on course as of now to have the strongest showing of any non-incumbent in the modern era of the Iowa caucuses. And the entrance polls show how, with majorities of caucus goers saying that they believe the lie, that President Biden didn't win legitimately. It's a false belief, but it shows the degree to which Trump has, has remade and refashioned the Republican Party in his image, not only with new Repu Republican voters coming in, but also by convincing Republicans of his ideology, even when empirically false. Mr. Trump, of course, facing 91 felony charges, and the majority of caucus goers today said that they would vote for him for president, even if convicted, whether related to his attempts to overturn the 2020 election or his handling of classified materials. Either way, nonetheless, a powerful, powerful victory for him, record-breaking if the numbers hold. Almost half of the base of the Republican Party showing up for this caucus tonight voted against Donald Trump. Think about that. I mean, this is the most famous Republican. He's the guy who, you know, basically built the modern Republican Party, the MAGA Republican Party that Democrats are running against. And half the people in that party didn't vote for Donald Trump. So I think that is telling. It tells you the weakness of Donald Trump and also the opportunity for Democrats. Because in the end, look, uh, if the base doesn't turn out for Donald Trump in the general election enthusiastically and Democrats turn out its base, this is all about, you know, independents and independents don't like Donald Trump. So I think we're in a pretty good uh, place tonight to, to, to see what's happening on the Republican side. Uh, if Donald Trump, in fact, is the uh, uh, winner tonight and able to win in New Hampshire and in South Carolina, probably the race is over.